Hey, um, happy post uh, Good Friday. Uh, hopefully you guys survived it, but, but seriously, happy Thanksgiving. Hopefully you guys had a fantastic week and just celebrating. Um, we were in Branson, Missouri, where it rained every day, and when we got home, we had to do something different. We had to dig into our house. Instead of getting snowed in, we got snowed out, and so we had to get shovels and try to get into our driveway, but you guys all got like a record snow here this week, and so hopefully you were able to enjoy that and have some fun. Um, I, I want to jump into this today. Uh, that song, It's the Most Wonderful Time of the Year, was written in 1963, and it was written about the busyness of the season. Has any of that changed? It's like 50, uh, don't do math in public, they tell me, 56 <laughs> years, right? 56 years later, the busyness looks different, but it still feels almost unrelenting during this season. And you can get caught up in it. You really can. And I think part of it is because we really want the season to be great. I don't know of anybody who um, just wants a blah Christmas celebration. We, we want the very best. We want our kids to be smiling, and, and we want our wives to have twinkles in their eyes, and, uh, and, right? And women, they, you just want your man to shave. That's, that's just what it is, right? So anyway, um, we, we, uh, we spend like a crazy amount of time traveling. We spend an even crazier amount of time preparing for all of the festivities. And so let me, let me say this before I get started. My goal is not to stress you out. <laughs> I just want to talk about the busyness for a moment. We spend a lot of time buying presents, wrapping presents, spend a crazy amount of time shopping for food and then preparing the food. We spend a lot of time um, cleaning and wrapping the gifts and just trying to get everything right. And then in the middle of this season, there's always school activities going on. There's, there's parties, there's, there's plays, um, and sports hasn't stopped. In fact, we're at the, we're at the apex. Congratulations, Palmer Ridge, uh, heading to the state championship. Discovery Canyon fell just a little bit short this last week as well, but man, some Pine Creek and a number of, of high schools around here just ramping up for state championships. So football is happening. Basketball has already started. I mean, there is, there is a crazy amount of stuff that's happening right now in this moment. And so it makes a much busier pace of life. And for most people, you still have a full-time job <laughs> or two. Like you, you've got multiple jobs and then your jobs like to do office parties. And there's always extra events along the way. And so we, we feel this pressure at times because we feel like we're supposed to have the patience of Mother Teresa during this season. But we're also supposed to have like the social perfection of Martha Stewart and just do it really, really well, right? And so th then you, you get into your attic and you pull out your Christmas decorations. And if this hasn't happened for you already, it's probably this week it's going to happen. Now, I do know some people like my wife who decorated like two months ago. And so, um, but you get into the attic and you untangle the ball of Christmas lights and Somehow, when you're all finished, your, your house should look like it was featured on an HGTV special. Like, we just feel this pressure. We want everything to look so good, and we want the food to taste so amazing, and we want our kids to just say, best gift ever. You know, like, that, that's, that's what we see. Does anybody else ever feel that kind of tension, pressure, right, responsibility? We, we, we carry it on our shoulders, and we think that that's, like, that's up to us to make that happen. And then, then, this is my favorite part, the sometimes dysfunction of, of holiday parties themselves. Because when you go to a party, think about this, you have your own traditions, you have your own rules and your own etiquette, and you bring a bunch of people from different families, from different places, different backgrounds, and you put them in the same room, and there is just a collision that happens because, well, that's not the way we do it. That's, this is what we've always done. And so these, these parties are incredibly enjoyable. I, I encourage you, if you've not already done this, to just sit back and watch people. If you're a people watcher, just watch people during these family events. I am convinced, and you may argue with me about this, I am convinced that I have the most entertaining family in the world. <laughs> so we spent Thanksgiving with our family this year, and um, we always have moments of talking and moments of eating and, and moments of playing and sometimes even singing and like all this stuff. But then it's followed by moments of total chaos where you are, you're looking around and you, you realize that 
like somebody just let the crazy out. It's just, it's nuts. And I know you guys can relate to this. It just, it made me think a few years ago at our house on, on Christmas morning, our two oldest kids were, were, I know this didn't happen in your house, so this is just going to happen with us. Our, our two oldest kids were arguing about who gets to open gifts first. That's our two oldest ones. Our youngest daughter was taking ornaments off of the tree and, and hiding them wherever she wanted to go, right? Um, I, was, I was hungry, a.k.a. hangry. I just wanted to get some food in my system. That it's Christmas morning, and my wife was trying to get us to all sing Christmas carols. And it, it was, it's kind of like, you know, oh, oh my word, <laughs> welcome to the world, baby Jesus. I hope you like chaos because that's what's happening in the Tanton house right now. Is there anybody else who's your home is like that sometimes? Please don't let me, don't let me up here by myself. Uh, family time can get crazy. And, and sometimes you can feel the chaos. But there comes a moment in all those parties that, that all of the adults long for. And you know it's the time I'm talking about here. It's when all the kids, they finally crash. The food has kind of made everybody slow and sleepy. People turn to football or they turn to Facebook. And uh, the dishes have kind of been stacked up. And basically everybody's just plain checked out. Right? So you're still there, but you're not really there anymore. And so you know, you know what I'm talking about because this happens more than just in Christmas parties when you're physically in attendance, but you're mentally not present. So you can call it what you want. You can call it spaced out or zoned out or whatever it may be. But it, it, like you're in a meeting, but your mind is on dinner that night, or you're in class, but you're thinking about your plans for the weekend, or you're in church, but you're thinking about the Broncos game that's going to be later on. Like I know how, I know how it works, right? You're here but you aren't really here. You ever had those moments before? When you get distracted, your mind is elsewhere. The Christmas season has begun now, and so what I want to do is I want to talk this morning just very briefly about how to not get distracted. How to not get distracted in the middle of the chaos, in the middle of the Christmas carols, in the middle of the pumpkin pie, how to be present for the holidays. And so I want to I talk about this story that you find. Um, there, there's four books in the Bible that we call the Gospels. They're, they're the story of Jesus that different authors captured. And so Luke writes this story of Jesus, and he, he captures this interaction that Jesus has with two sisters, and their names are Mary and Martha. And it's, it's found in Luke chapter 10, verses 38 to 42. Mary and Martha, these are, these are two women with great hearts for God, but very different personalities. And here's what Luke says. I'm going to go ahead and read this for you. Now, as they were traveling along, he, Jesus, entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister called Mary, who was seated at the Lord's feet, listening to his word. But Martha was distracted with all of her preparations, and she came up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the serving alone? Tell her to help me. But the Lord answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and bothered about so many things, but only one thing is necessary, for Mary has chosen the good part which shall not be taken away from her. Now, I'm sure that you've noticed that siblings have very different temperaments. I'm sure that you remember being very different from your siblings, and if you're a parent, you know for a fact that your kids have very different personalities, very different temperaments. And in this particular situation, Martha isn't very happy with her sister, Mary. And so I realize that probably at some point in your life, you will relate to both of these sisters at some level. But I wonder after reading this passage today, if maybe one of these you relate better to. Are you more of a, of a Martha who is just busy with all of the details? Or are you more of a Mary who is laid back and, and listening? And so on, on this first one, I don't, I don't really want to, I'm not going to have you raise your hands. I just want you to think about this. Are, are you, do you relate more to Mary? Are you more of a laid back person who can just kind of go with the flow? You can just get into the moment. And if that's you, I just say, God bless you, but I don't get you because that's not me at all. 
It's just not, I mean, I can relate to Martha. As, I don't know if there's anybody else. Let's do a show of hands on that. Are there any other Marthas in the house? Like, you've got to be busy. You got the plans. You got, you got to work this stuff out. You, you, you can't sit still. I think that, that probably some of you guys would relate with this. And, and I'm hoping that today, this is going to unburden a lot of you guys who get busy during the season. But it's also going to help you just to, to refocus on here. Because uh, by nature, I'm a very driven person. And so what that means is this. Let me explain what a driven person, um, their mentality. Whatever I'm doing right now is the most important thing for the whole world to everyone right now. This, this is what is most important to me. And I get focused on it, and I get my head down, and I just work, and I work, and I, is there anybody else who's like that, okay? So that, I'm a driven person, and I get, I get locked in. The problem with it is, is if sometimes I lock into something, and I get so focused and consumed with something that isn't actually the most important thing, but I'm locked in, and I'm there. And so while recognizing that Martha ends up getting corrected at the end of this story, uh, what I'd like to do is I'd like to take a moment and I'd like to defend her. For all the Marthas out there, I am, I am for you today. I am, I am for you today. The Bible said in verse 38 that it was Martha who opened her home for Jesus. And I've heard a lot of sermons talking about Mary and Martha, and usually Martha's the one that gets thrown under the bus. But what I want to do is I just want to point out, if it weren't for Martha, Mary wouldn't have had a place to sit at the feet of Jesus. She just, she wouldn't have, there's something to be said for people who, who take it upon themselves to make all the preparations. Can I get an amen? amen? Are there some people, you just love that. Like that's your jam, that's your wheelhouse right there. It's an important part of life. Martha opened her home to Jesus. Listen, she's not an evil person. She absolutely loved Jesus, and she opened her home for him and hosted him. And, and then there's Mary. And so uh, don't, 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 um, don't hate me. I'm just going to throw a rock at Mary for a second, okay? <laughs> just, just for a second. Just laid back. My wife's really nervous right now. <laughs> she's like, what are you going to say? Um, we'll see where this goes, all right? <laughs> um, <laughs> Sometimes, because I, I have sometimes fallen into this category as well, laid back, just chilling, um, letting stuff happen around you, just letting people do their thing. And I could imagine this conversation to where <clears throat> Mary says something like, hey, Martha, I've got, I've got a great idea, great idea. What if we have Jesus and all the disciples over to your house and we, we can cook we can have a meal for them. We could play Scrabble. We could hang out. We could just have some fun together. Like, it's going to be absolutely great. And what happens is if you're a Martha, as soon as somebody mentions that, all of the details start dropping into your head. Is anybody like that? It's just like boom, 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 boom. Detail, 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 detail. All the things that need to be done. That means I've got to clean the house. I've got to get extra dishes. I've got to shop for food. Then I've got to cook the food. We're going to need to borrow some chairs from the neighbor. I've got to find the Scrabble game in storage. And what if they need a place to sleep when they're all done. How many of you Marthas have ever felt that kind of attention where it just drops immediately? All the details, especially during this time of the year. This is where it can get overwhelming. This is why this message is so relevant during the Christmas season. Because if you are hosting a party and you're shopping for just the right gifts and you're shopping for just the right food and you're cleaning the house and you're cooking the food and you're serving the food and you've got to find the perfect mix of Bing Crosby Christmas to play in the background. Can I get an amen on that? You got to have a room for babies to play. You got to have a room for the dads to take a nap. Hallelujah. You're making sure everybody's coffee cups are full all the time, taking out the endless trash that builds up and you're just, you're running this thing like a machine and you're back because, listen to me, you're wanting to provide an environment where people love to be. And this is the heart of Martha. But here's what we've got to know. By the time Mary shows up to the party, Martha's got probably 30 hours already invested in this event that's just getting ready to start. And she has planned and she has prepared. And I just want to say, Martha, you are so, so valuable. 
what you do for your families, what you do for the, your loved ones and the community around you is just absolutely priceless. Life would not be the same without Martha's. And so I want to say thank you. And I also want to let you know this passage does not suggest in any way, shape, or form that Martha's evil. And it also does not suggest that preparations are evil. It doesn't at all. If you take that away from the passage today, you actually miss the point of what Jesus is talking about here. And so I, I kind of want to hold this tension here because it doesn't just happen in the holidays, it happens in life. And I do think that you guys feel the tension, not just in this season, but I do think you feel the t this tension. There is so much that needs to be done in life. There's so much that you got to work on. Man, I know that this resonates with you. There's so much to be done and yet you really do want to see God at the center of it all. And so in this passage, our, our issue that we're going to address is very simply that Martha got distracted. And so for all of you who find yourselves getting distracted during this Christmas season, I just want to offer an approach to you. It's, it's not just for this season, but it, it's really for life and there's three statements that I want to give you today as we look at this passage one more time. And so we're just going to circle back to Luke chapter 10, verse 38. And this is how it starts out. Now, as they were traveling along, he, this is Jesus, he entered a village and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. And I, I, I want you to recognize it was actually very customary for Jesus to stay in the homes of people who were hungry to hear from him people who were spiritually hungry, who wanted to be with the Messiah. And so he chose to stay in Martha's home, probably because of her, her hospitality. Jesus liked to stay there. And so without, without listing any names or any nudges, you probably have family that you love to stay with and other family that you don't love to stay with. And the reality is that there are some people who are wired with this warmth, with this hospitality, with this care. It's a good thing that we're talking about in Martha here. And so, again, the world needs Martha's. We really do. But the first thing that I want to point out then this morning is this. Making preparations is very important. It's, it's a real deal. Martha was busy doing something here we, we, that Luke captures her doing something that was very important. And I just want to acknowledge that. What she was working on, what she was, what she was doing was very important. The story goes on to say this. Martha had a sister called Mary who was seated at the Lord's feet listening to his word. And so this is where we give Mary her due, okay? This is where we give Mary her due. Mary is found doing the thing that ends up getting celebrated here. She's doing the most important thing, which was listening to Jesus. And so we have to recognize, again, those of you who are driven and you get locked in, you have to recognize this was the whole reason for all of the preparations. This was what it was all about. This was the central objective here. The entire point of this gathering was to spend time with Jesus. And it brings us to the second point here, and that's this. Focusing on Jesus is most important. So preparations are important because they help us to do the most important things. So here's where the tension comes in. Sometimes we get caught up in the preparations that we miss the purpose. We get so consumed with the details that we miss what it was all about. And we think the things that are very important are actually most important when they're not. And we get distracted, just like Martha did. And, and here's what Luke writes about Martha. And he said this, Martha was distracted with all the preparations. Now, let me, let me talk about the tension here. Why is it that just a moment ago, the preparations were good? Why is it that just a second ago, in, in just like a couple verses earlier, we're celebrating all of the details, all of the preparations that Martha is making but now, these same preparations became a distraction. I, I really believe that one of the enemy's greatest tools in our life is to distract us from the most important things. 
and we consume ourselves with details that we believe are very, very important, but they're not most important. And so the enemy can consume your time with details and keeping you from those things. And you know this. You know the world is full of distractions, things that are important, things that we should give our attention to. And the more pressure that those distractions create, the more they draw our attention the more pressure it develops. But here's, here's where this tension comes. There comes a time when we have to disengage from all of the preparations so that we can be present with the Savior. Which means this. There comes a moment when you've got to put down the dishes. You've got to let the coffee cup stay empty. You've got to let the trash build up a little bit. And you need to give your attention to the most important thing. In this situation, and in most situations in life, the most important thing was about focusing on Jesus, giving him our attention. Listen, there, there, is, a, there is a temptation within church. There's a temptation within pastors. There's a temptation within the body of Christ to get our attention on the details, and it draws us away from the Savior. So, so contrary to, to what you may have heard or maybe you've seen demonstrated somewhere else, the, the church is not all about the lights, and it's not all about the sound, and it's not all about the new connection cards, which are cool, but it's, it's a detail. That's not what we're about. We're about a relationship with Jesus. And if we get so consumed with the details that we never actually get our focus on what's most important, then we have become distracted. I don't want to be a distracted church. I don't, I don't think you want to be a distracted Christ follower. I think you, just, you want to have that laser focus. That's what we want. And so Jesus is providing some correction here to Martha. Martha who at first all the preparations were beautiful and they were paving the way for the most important thing, but there came a moment when she needed to disengage from the preparations now and focus on Jesus here. And so I think it's important once again to acknowledge this. This is not a passage about one woman that had an evil heart and one woman that had a good heart. They both loved Jesus. Their hearts for the Savior were the same. They loved him. They wanted to hear them, to hear him. But what separated them was that Martha allowed herself to get distracted. I, guys, I've been there. I, I feel like it's a constant tension in my life that I have to set down the details and set down the distractions. Mary, as much as I wanted to throw a stone at her, Mary stayed focused on what was most important. And so I get this. Our personalities are different. This is not a personality sermon. This isn't about one personality being right, one personality being wrong. It's not about good and evil um, temperaments here. Some of us are wired for serving. Some of us are wired for soaking. I would like to say that both are important in the kingdom. I would like to say that you can find both of them modeled by our Savior Jesus. We have to know that these sisters had the same heart for God. And so when I read this passage the very first time, I, it took me a while to realize everything that it was capturing because at first I thought it was simply just about not being so busy. And I think that's true. Can I get an amen? Like we just need to just like chill out, just slow down. I think this is, this is a good passage about slowing down and not getting so busy. But then I also thought it was a passage about priorities, and I, and I think in some ways it is. Jesus said at the end of the passage that Mary had chosen the higher priority. So there has to be something in here about prioritizing our life. I think that's really important. But the more times that I just read through this short passage over and over and over again, I began to realize it's, it's not just about busyness. It's not just about prioritizing our life. But it really is a passage that's about being present. It's being engaged in what is really most important. 
in life. And it leads us to this third simple statement here. Being fully present is the key. Like, are, are you really here? <laughs> and I'm not saying, like, all of a sudden, were you daydreaming? But, but are you really here? Are you, are you really present? Is your heart really here? Is your, are, are your thoughts really here? Are, are you, or are you thinking about something else? Is your mind somewhere else? Are you, are you distracted? Because I will say this, oftentimes, and again, I, um, I'd have to throw myself under the bus so many times in this sermon, just to be honest with you guys. We get distracted with the presence, with the food, with everything that maybe you pinned on Pinterest that you wanted to do for the holidays. And listen, I, I think Jesus loves those things. I really do. But I think that his heart would say, but are you really present with me during the season? And so, so here's what, it, there's a few years back that um, I took my family up to Beaver Creek. This, is, this has probably been four years ago. We went up to Beaver Creek, and it was during the fall, and there was, um, it, it was just a beautiful day. And we found this park, and it had like the world's best playground. It was brand new. <laughs> it was absolutely amazing. And my kids loved it. And they were playing, and they were playing, and they were laughing, and they were having fun. And like, this is a, this is a dad's dream, right? You're in the mountains, and it's like these, these the snow-capped peaks uh, that, are, that are like towering over you, and there's pine, and there's aspen, and your kids are running and playing, you know? And, and like, this is, this is absolutely amazing. And so I had to get a picture. This was really such one of those moments that I had to capture a picture. Guys, I'm not very good at picture taking. It probably took me 15 minutes to get a good picture. And then I thought, oh man, this is a great picture. What if, I, what if I get it into Instagram? I put a filter on that. You know how that just makes it look really professional then, right? And so I get it into Instagram, I'm taking some time. My kids are playing. They're like, dad, come play with me. I'm like, I'm busy. I'm, I'm, I'm getting this picture done. And, and, and I, I take another five minutes getting filters put on it. And then I'm like, oh, man, I'm going to load this to Instagram. I'm also going to load it up to Facebook, and I'm going to put, like, this fun caption about, you know, best day ever, Tanton family rocks, and trying to find fun stuff, hashtag, you know, whatever, Colorado life, living it up, and all kinds of stuff. And, and while I'm doing this, and listen, this is probably taking me 20 minutes at least, and my kids are saying, Dad, come play with us. And in my mind, I'm thinking, would you stop bothering me? I'm trying to capture a picture of this moment so that we remember this, so that everybody can see how much fun we're having. And listen, I'm, I'm, I'm laughing at myself. I was distracted by these details that kept me from actually being present in the moment. So by the time, listen, I'm just, I'm just being honest, by the time I'm, I'm done with all of the social media and the pictures and, and celebrating our family, my family was ready to go. And I missed the moment. I was there, but I wasn't, I wasn't there. I just, I just wonder if that's ever happened to you at Christmas time before. Where by the time you're done with the cooking and the wrapping of the presents and all of the fun stuff, and you're, you're finally finished with it, that you find out that Christmas is over and you were, you were ready for Christmas, but you found that you weren't actually ready to celebrate Christ. At some point, at some point, Patrick, you gotta put that stuff down. Martha, you gotta put the stuff down. You gotta disengage. And you can't let it become a distraction from what is most important. It's easy to become distracted by those things and to neglect the entire reason that you're there in the first place. And so Martha invites Jesus over to her house. She's prepared. She's got all the stuff going. And the moment when he starts te teaching where she should have said, the preparations are over. Now it's time to sit at the feet of Jesus. This is what we're here for. This is the most important thing. But instead, Martha, and this is what we know Martha for now, Martha says, she starts fussing at Jesus, and she says, Jesus, tell my sister to get up and to get over here and to help me. So not only is she distracted, and I know none of you guys have ever done this before, but why don't they get off their lazy butt and help me? 
Why are you guys sitting around? Come on, don't you see that some guys are nodding their heads? Don't you see I'm doing all this stuff myself? Martha wasn't just distracted, but she was frustrated that, that people weren't helping her in the middle of her distraction here. And so Jesus responds with tenderness, and we know, we know this because he says her name twice. Parents, you do this all the time. Martha, Martha, you're, you're worried and you're bothered with many things. Your preparations have now become a distraction for you, but only one thing is necessary. Only one thing is important. Jesus didn't rebuke her. He didn't get upset at her for making a meal. He didn't say the preparations are evil. Her problem wasn't that she was preparing food for her guests. Her problem was that she gave too much value to it, too much importance to it. And so today we, we have to be careful that we don't let the things that we do during the holidays become more important than the one that we celebrate. How big your Christmas season is, how, how great it is, can't be based on what you produce. The number of gifts, how pretty the lights are, how great the food is. It has to be about the one that we celebrate. So in verse 42, here's what Jesus said. I love the way the Passion, passion Translation says this. Mary chose what was most important. Your preparations are very important, but Mary chose what was most important, and she is, I didn't even know this was a word, undistracted. Undis she, she is not distracted. She, she is undistracted, and I'm not going to take this privilege from her. I'm not going to steal this moment from her. She has locked in on what's most important. Now, here's what I like about this. For all the Marthas out there, this is actually very, very good news because the good news is that you can choose. You can choose what you focus on this time of the year. If you're working on presents, if you're working on parties, if you're working on apple pie, apple pie all that stuff is fine, but don't miss out on being fully present with the Savior. And so here's a summary statement I want to give you. You can take it home with you. Just a summary of our conversation today. Your preparations are never as important as your presence with Jesus. This is our Christmas season right here. I'd love for you guys to write this down and just make sure that in all the stuff, all of your business, everything that you're doing, that you remind yourself the preparations are very important. But what's most important is your presence with the Messiah. The, one, the whole reason that we celebrate this season here. So I'm not saying don't buy presents. I'm not saying don't cook pies. I am saying that make sure that at some point you disengage from all of the parties, from all the wrappings, and you engage in celebrating him. Make it intentional. Make it special. You can choose. You can choose to do what's most important here. And so I want to I get ready to wrap up this morning. And I think it's really significant that uh, in the Christmas story, you think about this, Bethlehem was absolutely packed. And the staff at that inn, they, they were swamped. It was their busiest time of the year. And on top of that, all these extra guests. And so the guests, are, um, the guests have traveled from all around. It sounds, like a, a, it sounds like a Christmas celebration at your home, probably. People traveling in, they're finding rooms, they're getting cleaned up, they're finding something to eat. And in the middle of all of the busyness, in the middle of all of the commotion, there was no room for a very pregnant young woman who was expecting... And, but she didn't have a, a reservation. She was expecting a child, but no one was expecting her to show up. And so just beyond all of their preparations, just beyond all of their expectations, the Messiah is born outside of all of their busyness. Like, like they missed it. And you, and you just got to know this. There's, there's a risk about us just going about all of our Christmas activities that we, we get so busy and we end up with no room for what's most important. So I, I feel like maybe I've said this three or four times now, and hopefully it, it, as we circle around, get ready to land, that this is really setting in because a lot of our activity is, is like that in 
in Bethlehem where there is all this well-planned traveling that happens during the holidays, this well-choreographed eating, maybe even some singing, while the real deal, the most important thing is happening just outside of our plans, just outside of our preparations, just outside of our, our busyness. And if we're not careful, again, it may be that we end up being completely prepared for Christmas and at the same time not at all prepared for actually celebrating Christ. So this is why I wanted, to, I wanted to present this on December 1st. We are just now stepping into the Christmas celebration. You've got four weeks of celebrations in front of you. And I want to encourage you to make sure that you don't get distracted by some very important details and miss out on what's most important during this season. Hey, be intentional with your family. Be strategic on it. Plan it well. Celebrate. Listen, buy gifts. I love giving gifts. Bake pies. Bring me pies. I love eating pies. Like, like have a great time with all of the wrappings, all of the celebrations. Just make sure that you leave room for what this is all about, that you make room for him. Now, if you're here today... And maybe you find yourself in one of those Martha situations just in your life when you've been really busy doing all kinds of good stuff, but you've never made room for what's most important, and that's a relationship with Jesus. I want to give you an opportunity to just zone in on that and just focus on it today, to make that decision today, to put aside all the things that you've been busy with in your life that have kept you from the most important thing. I want to give you an opportunity to say yes to Jesus. And so if you guys would bow your heads and close your eyes, if you're here today and you would say, I have absolutely been distracted. There have been a lot of things in my life that have become really important and they've kept me from the most important decision. If you're here today and you're ready to say yes to Jesus, would you just raise your hand? I'd love to pray with you today. Maybe it's an opportunity to come back to him. Is there anyone else? Are there others? Okay, here's what I'd love to do. If you guys, with your, with your heads bowed and eyes closed, if you just pray this, this simple prayer, it's not magic words, it's just uh, finding words to describe what's going on in your heart right now. If you'd say, Jesus, this, this Christmas season, I want to give you the, the thing that you, you want most, and that's my heart, that's myself. And so, Lord, I ask that you'd forgive me that you would come into my life, you'd be my Lord and my Savior. I pray that you'd give me a brand new life, a new start with you at the center of it. And I ask you to lead me from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Listen, if you are here today and you prayed that prayer for the first time, or maybe it's just coming back to him and recentering during this season. I want to say that is the absolute best way to start this Christmas season. In fact, would you guys congratulate those who prayed that prayer today? We have these new connection cards, and I, want to, I just want you to know one of the reasons we printed these was because we wanted a, a nice, clear place for people who've said yes to Jesus to be able to let us know as a church community. And so on the back of this connection card is a box that says yes. And if you prayed that prayer for the very first time today, at the tables as you leave today, you'll see these connection cards. And there's just an opportunity here, a box. If you would take that and just check the yes box and put your name on there. If you drop it in that box, it just gives me an opportunity to follow up with you, to let you know I'm praying for you. But also, listen, as a church, one of the best things, one of the most important things that we can do as a community is to love each other well. And this is the most important decision that you'll ever make in your life. And so as a church, we want you to know that we're here and that we're supporting you and find out if there's anything that we can do for you. And so if you did, if you, if you prayed that prayer today, if you would take an opportunity just to fill that out, you could drop it at guest services or in those boxes as we go today. Would you guys stand with me? We're going to wrap up this morning. Hey, listen, we are starting into the holiday season here. There's a lot of fun that's in front of us. And I, I, seriously, guys, I hope you hear my heart on this. There is so much joy in all of those details. 
and in all of those preparations. And all of my fellow Marthas, I guess that's maybe a contradiction, the fellows and Martha, I can't forget. Um, all of those Marthas in the room that are like me, that you love to plan and you love the details, celebrate it. God gave you a gift. Provide an amazing experience for those people around you. But make sure that when the time comes for you to set those preparations down so that they don't become distractions, that you do that and you're fully engaged with what this season is all about. It's celebrating a God who loved you so much that he knew there was only one way that you could spend eternity with him. And the only way for that to happen was for him to send his son to you, to this world, to open a door, to make a way for you to be able to spend eternity with him. This season that we celebrate is the season when God gave the greatest gift that anyone has ever extended you, that anyone has ever extended to mankind. And so it ought to be filled with joy. It ought to be filled with celebration. It ought to be filled with singing. Because this, guys, this is the greatest gift ever. We get to sell. We get to, we get to live this life because of this gift here. And so I want to encourage you as we wrap up today to sing, to celebrate, to have fun, and to fully worship the Lord during this season. Amen? Let's pray. God, thank you for uh, your great love for us. Um, God, we pray that you would help us. Just help us, Lord, to keep from being distracted so that we could be fully present in these moments with our families, with our friends this holiday season, Lord. God, I pray that our decorations would be absolutely beautiful this holiday season, that all of the food would be delicious, that our gifts would be meaningful. But mostly, Lord, we pray that our worship of you this season would make you smile. And so we commit this season to you. We offer our lives to you, Lord, and we thank you. We pray in Jesus' name. Everyone said.